Next up on Access Central TV, we have Fighting Robots. And we have a music video by Anne Regina. We've got a segment on Hepatitis C Awareness. Listen, if Tammy Anderson can get it, so can you. And we have a fundraising event for Teresa Serio. All this and more on Access, Access Central, Central TV! TV! It's Mikkel with Access Central TV. Now I actually had to go run and rehearse, and I'll explain to you what that's all about. I am actually sitting with a playwright. Her name is Stephanie Delano Cleary, and Nell is actually rehearsing for one of her pieces, and it's called The Basement. Welcome, Stephanie. Hi. Introduce yourself to Access Central TV. Tell us like how long you've been a playwright. Well, actually, Nell is um, rehearsing right now on the new play, The Secret Hunter. We already performed The Basement last year, and uh, we have a movie done as well. Whoops, my bad. <laughs> so, well, so okay, so let's talk about The Basement. So, um, well, what happened was I, I've been writing forever and ever, since, since uh, as long as I remember, and uh, I've been writing poetry, short stories, and uh, dialogue-based stories, and I ended up... Um, writing some that sound, were kind of turning into one act and my husband was was really saying you know you should really do this you should turn this into a play and and lo and behold that's how the whole thing got started so the basement is going to, is now being filmed as a movie the basement was filmed as a movie and it was screened at the uh, new york Fil international film and it won best family drama for the movie and we're on to the next show which is called the secret hunter so now we have london after midnight with their music video called kiss watch it
So that was the kiss. You know, we got a handful of vampire goths on, in that video. I think that was really brilliant. So, Stephanie, tell us in four words or less what The Secret Hunter is about. Um, the Secret Hunter is about a, a family who is from Queens, and uh, two of the siblings, when they reach about 30 years old, find out that they had a brother and a whole other family that they didn't know about living in Oklahoma, a uh, different biological father, and it's a true story. That, uh, that needed to be more than four <laughs> words, and it's a true story. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Okay, <laughs> sitting in my seat about this story. So coming up next, well, before, uh, before I say this, we've actually been online on alternative.new dot nu every monday at 9 p.m and we have been getting uh an unreasonable amount of music videos from artists all over the world so this next video is from a band out of canada they are called kenzaza and the music video is called the river <laughs> music video was like, you know, a dream sequence sitting by the river, you know, kind of a Beatle-esque yellow submarine kind of deal. Really great. Thanks, guys. So, Stephanie, how long have you been a playwright? Did you ta tell us that already? Um, 
not sure how how long it's been. I've been writing plays for a while, but um, we produced the first play not this September, but last September two thousand one was my first produced play at the Pantheon Theater. Pantheon. Yeah. That's a no, that's a known theater here in New York City, folks. If you're not a New Yorker. So coming up after the break, we have a brand new music video by Ann Regina. Introducing the all-new Enclave. It's a minivan to the max. With features like remote control sliding rear doors, 150 cable channels, a full sky view roof, temperature controlled cup holders, and the six point navigation system. It's the minivan for families on the go. back from the break. So I have sitting next to me Jane Colucci. Now she is the producer of The Secret Hunter. Yeah. Hi Jane. Hi, yeah. How are you? Good. Um, so my first question for you is like what do you produce primarily plays? Or what is it that you produce? This is actually my first production. Uh, I have a business in marketing communications and the director Clyde Baldo came to me and said can you help us out? And my background in marketing has really been helpful in getting the word out about this play. And it's been a lot of fun. So are you the financial backing as well as the, the, the work in producing the play? Yes. I mean, I'm still seeking some investors, but um, I have invested my own money in it. And it's, yeah, it's my job to go out and get the money to make sure we're sticking to budget and to market the production. That's wonderful. So um, New York is going to be home base as a producer, or are you planning to maybe stretch out outside of Manhattan? Right right now, New York is home base. We're hoping after the production of The Secret Hunter to be able to make it into a movie. So who knows? I mean, we're all, I guess we're all hoping it's going to take us to Hollywood. So <laughs> That's wonderful. So I guess that leads to my next biggest question, and that would be um, what's the biggest challenge being a producer? For me, it's pretty much been finding the money to raise the money for it. Um, you know, it's, a bit, it's been a tight economy, and I think sometimes people don't have the available money that they want to support the arts. And for me, I just see these people who are so artistic and so dedicated and giving their, f their own personal free time to doing it. And, uh, you know, I just want to be able to support them in this endeavor. Wow. I got a couple more questions to ask you, but um, coming up next, is we have a brand new music video by Anne Regina, and it was shot on a plantation out on Long Island, and it's called Lifetime. Won't wait a lifetime for your love. And you 
that was, back? Yeah, that was uh, uh, Anne Regina, <laughs> Lifetime. You know, rolling in the leaves. Climbing, climbing trees. <laughs> You know, dance, <laughs> dancing on the plantation. <laughs> yeah. So I'm bringing Nell back. Um, she Hi. Hi. How's rehearsal going? It's going really well tonight. I'm yeah. very, very happy with it. It's so fun. This is the fun, the most fun I've had doing a play, I think, in a long, long time. So it's really fun. So are you camera shy? What, right now? Yeah. Why? Because we kind of want to, we're going to get some Oh, no, some no. Uh, yeah, shots. I'm going to put you guys in the hallway so that we can get some, uh, some, action rehearsal shots because it's really funny i think that if people see the humor and stuff in it they'll be it's really fun and funny <laughs> yippee <laughs> so what was you you were gonna ask oh okay so we're here with jane our producer who i think you guys have met when i was gone yeah but and, um, and, and oh and yeah we have the poster, the poster which is so beautiful yeah and it'll be up on the learn it know it memorize you're definitely going to want to see it Okay, anyway, so Jane, this is the first play that you produced, right? The yes. Secret Hunter. Are you going to do this again? Oh, like definitely. Yeah. I'm really having a great time with it. It's oh, been a, you know, it's been great to work with people and I'm having a lot of fun getting in the creative process. Good. That is so cool. So, yeah, that's what I wanted to know. Like is this a rewarding positive experience? Or are you losing your mind or but obviously it's good. Overall, it's been positive. I'm kind of like getting a little stressed out in terms of raising money and making sure cuz you know, things with independent are very low budget. Right. But uh, no, it's been a lot of fun. It's a great group of people, and uh, no, I definitely want to get involved with it and hopefully work with you guys, you again. One, the yeah, this the is a great group. The I, it's reward, so fun. The big reward is that you'll you'll find people who believe enough in your project that they're going to give the money. They're out there. That's they're out there. Yeah, but it's great. We don't open for what three weeks, and there's already a like a pretty good amount of tickets yeah. sold. Which is so cool. I mean, I was totally sad. I think, what, we're at, like at 66 or something, right? I think I've done plays in the city where we did shows for three weeks for like a total of 66 people. <laughs> like uh, over three weeks. I maybe. did one. I actually did one play where one person was in the audience. Yeah, I've done that too. <sighs> Life in the theater. <laughs> Anyways. It's so rewarding. <laughs> So coming up after the break, um, we have a fundraiser for Teresa Sario. Teresa Sario, <laughs> and um, we'll explain more after this. <laughs> Properly inflating my tires burns less fuel and saves me money on gas. Yeah, I'm saving Mother Nature from pollution, but more importantly, she saved me 11 bucks. Environmental events get green. By keeping my car regularly tuned, I save money on gas and repairs. That also means cleaner air. You know, feels good to help save the cash planet. Environmental events get green. For more tips, go to getgreen.com. Now we're going to see this benefit for Teresa right, for Sario. For Teresa Sario, and it was done at CB's Gallery. Right. And apparently Teresa was hit by a drunk driver, and she lost a leg uh, due to the accident. And word got out on uh, IndieGirl.com. Exactly. And they all clubbed together for this benefit. So we're going to see a few independent artists performing and raising money for yeah, her. Yeah, and it's amazing. I, I think it's always great news when the artistic community comes together yeah. to help one of their own certainly independent artists because there's obviously not a lot of money in it mm -hmm. most people don't have insurance and um to see a community come together like this is so uplifting and wonderful so let's take a look we're here tonight at cb's gallery it's a benefit for teresa sario teresa was involved in a car accident this summer and an entire group of indie girls which is uh, an internet community came together to have a benefit in her honor to help cover her medical expenses. We'll be hearing from some of those girls, some of the performers tonight, and we'll also be hearing from Teresa and from the organizer, Amy Van Dyne. Myself and a bunch of women from an organization called Indie Girl got together. Um, it's basically an internet service where we um, basically just email each other. And uh, we heard about what had happened to Teresa. We were all really, really uh, devastated. And uh, I basically just sent an email to everybody suggesting that we do a benefit. And uh, I sent the email out. And within the next hour, I got like about 20, 25 responses. I met Teresa about five years ago through an ad in the paper. And uh, she was looking for a keyboard player. And we've been friends ever since. 
when I had my accident, a lot of the New York City indie girls wanted to get together and do something. So that's how this event came about. And I'm just really moved and impressed that there's so many New York City indie girls together uh, at one time. basically on the internet and uh, from what I understand there's over about a thousand of us worldwide and um, I personally don't really know many of the indie girls because there are so many of us and um, when this happened to me Amy Van Dyne had emailed me and really wanted to do a New York City Indie Girl event. And um, I told her, that's really awesome. Go ahead, that's fantastic. And she put this thing together, um, her and a lot of other people. And I don't really know exactly who you are, but I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, I think it's extraordinary that over, uh, I guess it's about 15 of us indie girls are here together on, in one night from New York City. and I don't know if that's ever happened before, but I think it's a really beautiful thing. Yeah. To get us off the internet and onto the stage together. And uh, gosh, you all are so talented and so beautiful, and it is my pleasure and my honor to meet you tonight. And um, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here for me. Um, music, music is the reason I'm here. Yeah. And that is the bottom line. And that's why this night is just so perfect. So thank you again, everyone. Um, This is Mary Horenkamp singing background vocals with me. <laughs> I met Tracy Stark through a Village Voice ad many years ago. And uh, consequently, she's played on every CD. And I have two out. I'm working on my third. And um, this is a brand new song that will be on my next CD coming out next year. And it's called Again. There is no way I can rightly say how it feels now.
website is www.teresa with an H, Sario, S A R E O dot com. Fantastic. Well, it's great to meet you, and it's, it's a great night tonight. Yeah, it's terrific. I'm, my heart is full. I'm very, very touched. <laughs> That was um, a wonderful tribute for her. And there were 15 acts there that night. Obviously, we can't put them all in the air, but it was very emotional. And we want to thank our new reporter. Krista, the ripe sister. The ripe sister. Yeah. Her name is Krista McNamee, and um, she's on board as one of our roving reporters. We want to thank her. She's yep. awesome. Thank you, dude. All right. After the break, we've got tons of music videos. You guys are sending us all your music. It's awesome. We're putting as much of it on the air as we can. Keep it coming. And when we get back, we're going to show you a whole lot of it. Woo! Woo! <laughs> it's springtime in the forest of the black-tailed deer. The young male is feeling playful. It's time for tag. The female flicks her ears. Her way of saying, catch me if you can. See what Nell's doing. She's rehearsing hard. <laughs> it was awesome. That was awesome. You turned around, sweetheart. Her face when she turned around was like. I think they nabbed. I think they nabbed her. I was gonna laugh my ass. Oh God, is that funny? So coming up next, we got a music video by this man called. David Clement, well, his name is David Clement. He's out of California, and the music video is called Old Men. Sit in your chairs and relax. You sing like an old man, shuffling cards, examining your hands. Absent-mindedly stringing words together We danced like old friends in a haze And we talked too loud We bleed in tin cans And we save it away And we use it again Let's be old men, let's get lawn chairs and cars and hang around. Let's be old men, let's pretend not to hear when our bodies make weird sounds. Let's be old men, resign to our looks and our hair falling out. Let's be old men, remembering days before we put all our friends in the ground let's be old men let's be old men let's be old men That was David Clement from California. Now we're going to move to David Klein in Texas because you guys were getting a lot of videos from you and they're all wonderful. Now David Klein in Texas um, thinks he's a cowboy now. I know I ain't getting any younger, I told my wife. 
And I've always wanted to experience a cowboy's life. So there's one thing I'm going to do before I'm too old to ride. Yep, I'm going to go on a real cattle drive. So I bought a 10-gallon hat and a real pretty wall rag, a pair of cowboy boots, and some fancy saddlebags. I got me a pair of spurs and leather chaps with bat wings, and I learned a cowboy song so I could ride and sing. I know these fancy duds might be a little bit loud, but I'm on my way to be a cowboy now. First day at the ranch, trail boss said, here's you a real gentle horse. <laughs> well, he tried to throw me during my first riding course. But I was glued to that saddle and hanging on for dear life. And when he finally settled down, I thought, wahoo, what a ride. Now me and that old horse, we started pushing cows. I really do believe he thinks I'm a cowboy now. I was successful at roping a cow. It made all kinds of sounds. Next thing I knew, my face was buried in the dusty ground. The trail boss said, why, you're supposed to dally when you rope a cow. Well, mister, did you really think you're a cowboy now? After that, I took off my clothes to wash up in a Oh, cold river. <laughs> yep, you guessed it. I had those uncontrollable shivers. Why, I even slept on the ground in the rain, the sleet, and the ice because I was cold. That's the way of a cowboy's life. I fell in love with the horse and had fun pushing cow. Aching joints and saddle sores, I think I'm a cowboy now. Yep, I'm a cowboy now. Ain't no doubt about it. David, I think you earned your shit kickers. <laughs> so guys, coming up after the break, we're going to show you what a 14-year-old can build nowadays. Hey, we're back from the break, and uh, Andy and Mike Hiko Bryant went out to Long Island, and they met this brilliant 14-year-old. Um, he loves the show BattleBots, and I, that's what I get. I didn't get to interview him, but I clearly see that he loves the show BattleBots. And um, 
some kids like to dabble into other things, sports and, uh, you know, dating, you know, at 14, you know. And uh, this young guy decided he wanted to build um, a robot that sort of does things to plastic moving vehicles. Jake, who helped you build uh, these battle bots? Um, built it pretty much myself. Dad just did some welding on it. And how much time does it take you to build these battle bots? Um, that one took about two weeks. Where do you get the materials to build uh, your battle bots? I had most of the parts for this one and just find stuff in the garbage and do that. Mm -hmm. Like, can you give us an example of the different types of materials? Do you use metal? Do you find screws, scrap metal? What do you find in the, in the garbage to help build your battle bots? Well, I found the motors and gearboxes in the garbage. The Lexan I had to buy, and the stop sign, which is the top, is the old one from out in front of my house. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, your dad was saying something about the motors that you use to power the BattleBots. Could you tell us like where you get the motors, what kind of motors you use? Well, as I said, the ones to power the drive are out of the you know, power wheels I found in the garbage. The motor for the top is out of a wheelchair. How much money does it take to uh, build it? This one I took about a hundred, I think total, most of it in paint. But uh, the real ones people spend from like two to seventy thousand dollars. Sick money on them. This is what the lid attaches to. The lid of the bat That's the lid. attaches to that. Yep. Okay, and what about this black part here that looks like the These are batteries out of emergency lights. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Why do you have five batteries in here? It's gotta have thirty six volts for everything. The drive motors take 6 volts each, and then this takes 24 volts. Okay, so the five batteries, what does that power? What part of the BattleBot does that power? They power all the three motors. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there are three motors in this? Yep. Okay. There's one back there, another over there, and one in the front. Okay, and uh, these are the wheels. How did you design the wheels? Where did you get the wheels from? It originally used the wheels off the power wheels, but what happened was it was so heavy they'd bend, mm -hmm. and then it wouldn't be able to move, so we made these out of wood. Okay, what happens is when you turn on the switch over here, the batteries send off the, I think it's like 5 volts or something, off the little box over there, uh -huh. which then when I do something on the radio, sends the signal out through those wires to these boxes over here, uh -huh. which flip the switches to control the drive. Oh, okay. And I have the same thing, I have the same thing set up to control the motor for the top. Mm -hmm. Now I see you have the wires covered in different color tape. Why did you put it in different color tape? So I usually would mix them up and then it wouldn't work. Okay, so that's like uh, color that's coding. Okay, color coding. And aren't you afraid that you might get electrocuted one day working with this? <laughs> no, you can't get electrocuted by 36 volts unless it's <laughs> unless it's got a lot of amps, but that's only like maybe 10 amps total. Oh, nice.
that machine did some like serious damage. Oh my God. Andy, did you survive? Yeah? Did my Kiko? <laughs> um, uh, and I, I believe he's homeschooled too. So he's a very interesting, unique young man. And I wish him well. So after the break, <laughs> we have um, uh, actually a more uh, serious topic, um, a story around hepatitis C. Stay with us. Uh, Mrs. DeBruzzo, I'm Ed McMahon, and we're Ed signing up You're people Ed for... Yeah, yes, 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 I am. Yeah. <laughs> Miss Murphy, Ed McMahon. Uh, we're starting up. No, Woo! no, 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 no. Dreams no. really do come it, true. Oh, but it's dinero, dinero. No, 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 no time. Yes, Ed con McMahon. Seat. Ed McMahon. Uh, yes, Ed McMahon. We're having our first Ed ever. Ed McMahon. Yes. <laughs> Tuesday night at the high school. Don't you get it? Get it? Uh, we're starting up the uh, neighborhood watch in this area, and can, here's all the information. Uh, Stevie, get down here, please. Oh, he's just oh, here. It's just, it's Five, just... six, seven, eight. No tango dinero. Neighborhood, dinero. neighborhood watch. Oh. We're having this neighborhood watch, the first one. Right. Larry, put some pants on. I'll, I'll come back. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Start a neighborhood watch. It's just one of the many ways you can help make America stronger. To find out how, call or log on for this free guide. We're back from the break. We're going to watch Nell in action before we introduce this, the, the next segment. Look at her. She's so serious. Drinking her water. What's she going to do next? Wow, the tension mounting. I can't get over it. Coming up next, oh, we have a segment on hepatitis C. Watch it, okay. So um, this is your gig, Go Girl. Go Girls Music Fest. Dot com is a organization is an organization of women that network across the country right. and every year they put together a fest mm -hmm. of concerts um, mm -hmm. it's like a tour and it's um, for a specific charity this mm -hmm. year we're doing it for hepatitis C mm -hmm. awareness mm -hmm. with the American Liver Foundation mm -hmm. and um, it's really exciting we're here in New York and we'll be in Stanford tomorrow night and then there's another 19 cities all across the country right. and how did you come up with this well, Go Girls Music is not my company, actually. It's somebody else's, and they do this fest every year. And I approached them and said, why don't you guys do your fest for Hepatitis C Awareness this year? Because I work with the American Liver Foundation. So we, want, we put the two together, and we have the fest. And what inspired you to do that, other than working with the Liver Foundation? Well, I actually lost a good friend to Hepatitis C over a year ago. Mm -hmm. And um, our band, which is Kelly's Lot, it's my right. band, um, we're the spokes band for the American Liver Foundation. Right. So we've been already doing a lot of awareness for about two and a half years. Right. So I know the owner of Go Girls, and I just said, let's put the two together and make it even bigger. Kelly's Lot can only do so much, right. but Go Girls can do more. Right. Because they're bigger, you know? Okay, great. So did you have fun tonight? Would you say it was a good turnout? I think it was a good turnout. A lot of people were really interested in the in the awareness, which mm -hmm. is really important. Um, to me, the, the, the success of all these events is really what happens with the media, what happens right. with the papers, when people list it, people talk about it. Right. That's really the success right, right. there. And then the, the gig is the cream, on, you know, the icing on the cake. Right. You know, because a lot of people call me from all over the country at, saying, oh, I heard about the uh, Go Girls Music Fest happening in Milwaukee, happening in St. Louis. I want to know more about it, or I want to know more about hepatitis C. Right. That's the success. Because the awareness is the number one. Not the raising of the money at the door, right. not necessarily the music, but it's the, the awareness for the hepatitis C. That's what we're all here about. All the bands here tonight and all across the country, they're all donating their time right. to do this. And it's an amazing, um, amazing group of women that are doing this. Good. And can you tell me, like, how many, you know, you're talking about women and stuff like that. How many women get impacted by hepatitis C every uh, year, you say? Well, they say it's four million that have it right now. Um, the main thing about hepatitis C is it's women and men really are, they're about even with it, but mm. um, it's 75% of people who have hep C do not know they have it. Right. 
Okay, so it's really about let's people don't know what it is. People right. think they get it from drinking alcohol. Right. People don't realize it's a virus in the liver. They don't understand what Hep C is. They think right. it's like hepatitis A, which is bad food or, right. or other things. You know, so they, they just don't understand what hepatitis C is. So that's what we want to do is so people will become aware. And if you're in the high risk factors, right. go get tested. Right. I think everybody should be tested. Right. But right now we're starting with people who are in the high risk factors. Right. And so approximately how much have you, has this organization raised so far at this? Well, for right now, as far as uh, Go Girls Music Fest 2002, we've probably raised about um, probably $1,800 so far. But we just started. Right. No, that's great. But yeah. Like, I was thinking overall. Overall, I ho hopefully we'll raise over 10000 Okay, great. So, you know, but it, it, like I said, the, re the, the real part of it is the awareness. I mean, I get calls from people who have hepatitis C right. who have never told anybody they have it. Right. And they call me and tell me they have it. And right. I'm like the second person in their life they told. Right. Because they're embarrassed to tell people that they have it. Right. And that sh this should not be how right. it should be. People should not be sick and embarrassed. I think they should do is go to gogirlsmusicfest.com and they can find out where we're going to be at. And there's there's bands all across the country playing for this and there are all kinds of different styles. So right. you can probably find something that you like. Oh, welcome back. Welcome back. I'm, oh, I'm so tired. <laughs> and now I'm from Queens. <laughs> oh my God. So we're going to let... Uh, Queens now. What's your character's name? Alexandra Burns. We're going to let Alexandra rest for a second. <laughs> um, and we're going to close for another show. And keep sending the videos in. Yeah, keep we got to have that in. stuff, you guys. It's yeah. awesome. It's, and it's wonderful to, to be receiving all this yeah. stuff. Yeah. And just if you've just tuned in to us, one way to get a hold of us is through our snail mail. And that's at 527 Third Avenue, Suite 166, New York, New York, 10016. Or you, yeah. <laughs> or you can <laughs> email us through our website at accesscentral.tv. But we'll see you later. All right. Tune in again next week. Bye. Bye. Yeah, but we didn't tell you I was never let alone two, huh? Let alone two. Jesus, Alex, I don't even want one.